Hello everyone and welcome back to our portfolio series. Today I am sharing my screen with you rather than showing you my face or my hands because we are going to be inputting our extracts and our annotations into the template in Google Classroom. So the first thing you're going to have to do obviously is open up your Google Classroom and go into your speech and drama classroom. Then you're going to look for your topic, your portfolio topic and click on your portfolio assignment. There there is an example, but then there'll also be the template file, which is the one you can edit and you can edit it within Google Classroom. So on the title page, all you need to do is change the name to whatever your name is um, and then your author name, just put in whoever it is you're writing your folder about. The extract I am using as an example is by Naomi Wallace. Yours might be Oscar Wilde, whoever it is, just to make it easy for the adjudicator to tell who you're writing about. I would use your contents page as like a tracking device. So as you're adding extracts, put them into your contents and list what page of the book they're from. So for example, I've changed text one to the Treslet Public Creek and I've put in extract one, page 47. So I now know when I look at my contents that I still have two extracts to type in from that. It just keeps things easy. Then I'm scrolling down to that first extract and changing the title of the text to Trestle at Poplet Creek and adding in that page number again. Now it's time to type your extract. I am going to have a little trick for this at the end, but honestly, nine times out of ten, you're just going to have to type it up. Once you get into the swing of it, it doesn't actually take that long. It just takes a bit of getting used to. So for drama, I type the character's name in all caps, then do a colon, and then I tab it across a couple of times just to make it clear who's speaking. For think for poetry and prose, that'll be slightly different. But for drama, that is a little tip for you to make it nice and clear. So as you can see, because you have your annotation box, the extract starts to take up space really fast. So you may want to cut sections. The way that you show that is you just put in a little ellipses. So Dalton speaks in this scene as well. I'm not talking about Dalton. I'm only talking about Pace. So I am just going to tab, do an ellipses, and then tab again and continue with Pace's next line. You can do that as you go along. You may also, when you get to the end, realize that you've typed in two full pages of text and have to go back and delete some stuff and put in ellipses instead. It's up to you. You can do it at both points, but it does save you some time if you figure out what you're cutting before you've typed it in, obviously. <laughs> If you do have a longer extract, don't be afraid to make the text smaller, to mess about with the line spacing. If you go into format, line spacing and custom line spacing, you can reduce everything to zero, which hopefully would give you a little bit more space on the page. But your extracts don't have to be particularly long. It's just sometimes to make a point, it's easier to have a few more examples. So now that I have that extract typed in, I'm going over to this pink sidebar and this is where I'm going to put all of my annotation. So as you'll notice, I have a few instructions in there already, just if you're needing a little bit of guidance while you're completing it. But before you start typing your annotation, you can just delete that out. I am using exactly what was on my post-it notes, mainly in the order that I wrote them. The only thing that I'm editing is I'm going back and I'm putting the themes in alongside the different techniques. So for example, I have talked about uh, Pace's vulnerability in this scene, and then we'll go on and talk about the trauma and how that's a theme in this play is trauma. And it's a big part of Pace's character. So that's kind of becoming more interspersed. But generally, I'm just going through... I I'm fleshing out the ideas a little bit. 
I'm writing in full sentences and I'm linking the different paragraphs together a little bit more. But if you've done your annotation comprehensively, this should not take you very long. It's literally just typing it into the computer. Now I am only on I think point three at this point and you can see that I've filled up that sidebar box already so you can reduce the size. I wouldn't make it any smaller than size 12. If you are annotating any more than this box in size 12 you might need to cut it and just make your point more concise, make your points clear. You don't need to have lots of words. They're only going to look at this in your exam for maybe five minutes. So they're not going to have time to read lots and lots of text. Be precise. Make your points clearly. It's to get your ideas right in your head more than anything else. And that shouldn't take that much text. <laughs> So you'll notice I've just gone back to the start and I'm adding a couple of other points. Um, there were a few of my points that maybe weren't meaty enough to be by themselves. If you want, you can pause the video and have a read through my annotation if you want to get a really clear idea of what I've done there. But it is basically what we did in the annotation post-it note in last week's video. That is an entire extract done. You now need to do that eight more times to make sure that you have all your extracts done. But once you have those done, that's your folder 90% finished. The only other thing you'll have to do then is your essay at the end, which we will talk about not next week, but the week after. Um, there's another video in between. I'm also going to show you a little tip here. If you are in one of the older age groups and are writing about an older text, there is a strong chance it's in the public domain and you can find it online and copy and paste. If you have a modern text, don't do this. Like I couldn't do this with Trestle because it is too modern. If there is a version of it online, you can't guarantee its accuracy. But for example, if I was doing an extract from The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde, I could type in the title. For general texts that might be in the public domain, you want to look at Project Gutenberg. So you can see there I've gone in and I've got the entire text of The Importance of Being Earnest. I can then do Control F and find exactly what... I want the exact section that I had in the book when I was reading it, um, which is really handy. It's an easier way of doing it because you don't have to type the extract. You can just copy and paste. It will take a little bit of formatting. You'll notice when I delete a section, I just put in a little ellipses to show that something happened there. I don't have to explain what happened there or why it wasn't important to my extract you just take it out. And that is an easy way of condensing information. If you have a longer extract, not every single paragraph of it or every single speech is going to be useful for your annotation and for the points you're trying to make. I wouldn't make an extract any smaller than size 10. I have this now at size 10 and it is readable, but if you go any smaller than that, you'll be in diffs. Again, adjust your line spacing if you need to. That's the really the best way of doing it. If you have to go any smaller than size 10, you need to cut some stuff. You'll notice that I'm doing the same as what I did with Pace. I'm just tabbing over to show who the speaker is, um, that it's Cecily speaking, and then tabbing to show where her text starts. It just makes everything nice and clear and easy to read, easy to follow. The other site that might come in handy is Sparknotes and specifically their No Fear Shakespeare. Their No Fear Shakespeare you can use both when you're reading the text if you're struggling to understand or when you're typing it up. So for example, if I was doing an extract from Hamlet, I can go in, 
find the scene that it's from and then just literally copy and paste. You want to copy and paste the original text, which is on the left, not the modern text. The modern text you can use for reference, but the original text is what needs to go into your folder. So that's a couple of hints and tricks for you if you have an older text. I hope you find this useful. Um, like I said, next week we're going to talk about how to basically the customization of the folder, how to make it unique to you, how to make it represent your theme and represent your personality a little bit too. The only other thing then after that that we have to do is our essay at the end, which again, I will cover in a future video. If you have any questions about anything up to this point, please let me know and I will do my best to get back to you and give you a hand. Good luck with everything and I'll see you in the next video.